Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. Today I want to show you a video of how to set up your Synology Disk Station NAS to back up to Synology's brand spanking new C2 storage cloud service. Now, when I first heard about this, I was super excited. With DSM 7.0, um, you can now have the Synology C2 cloud as a backup destination. So for example, in my environment, I use my NAS for a whole bunch of things. Um, I have an older DS1813 Plus that I was able to upgrade to version seven of DSM. And um, for the most part, I use it as a backup for my local network. And then I use it for some picture storage and that kind of stuff. So uh, one thing that's really cool is that with the release of Synology C2 Cloud, we can now back up our NASes to the Synology C2 storage service. Um, it's very affordable. You don't pay to back up, you don't pay to restore, you don't pay for uploads, downloads, you just pay for the amount of storage that you're using on their service. And what's even nice is that there's deduplication for the business plans so that you can store multiple versions of backups and uh, deduplication kicks in so that you're not actually paying for each copy of the backup that you're uploading. On top of that as well, the way that the backup works is that it only copies changed blocks and changed files. So the thing is that, let's say that you upload, a, your backup's a terabyte in size. If you only change maybe 10 gigs worth of data, when you go to do your next backup, it's only copying and changing the 10 gigs of data. So it's very efficient as far as bandwidth management goes. So um, what I wanted to do is just a very quick, simple video showing you how to configure it on uh, your Synology disk station NAS. Uh, Kyle at Synology was nice enough to send me over a DS1621 plus. So what it is, I just, uh, as a, for demo purposes, I created a shared folder on it and uh, copied over some random data to it. So uh, let's get to it and I'll show you how to set this up. So most of you will be familiar with this. This is the uh, DSM operating system. Um, so what I did here is if we go to control panel and uh, we'll just take a look at the shared folders. I have a shared folder on volume one. I've got about uh, 2.52 gigs worth of data on it. And that's the shared folder that we want to uh, back up to Synology C2. So now what's really nice is that um, it uses a lot of built-in components. Um, so you, I've got a whole bunch of stuff on the desktop, but essentially uh, you just have to have hyper backup installed. And I think it's installed by the factory. If not, you can just go to the, uh, the applications and install it. Um, so to back up the shared folder, we just open up Hyper Backup. Since we don't have any backup jobs created yet, by default, it's going to open up the backup desk, uh, the backup wizard to create a new backup. We're going to go ahead and choose Synology C2 Storage. And it's going to open up a web browser. And so if you have a Synology account, you can log in with those credentials. If you don't have a Synology account, you're going to have to create one. And actually, in my case, it already <laughs> signed me in. I was hoping to show you the entire process. But essentially, when you do this, um, it'll ask you to sign in. After you sign in, it will prompt you and ask you uh, to start a free trial. The free trial is about 30 days, and I think you can choose any amount of data for that free trial. Um, so you choose what subscription you'd like. After the free trial, you, you do have to enter a credit card because when the free trial is done, it will start to bill you. So you wanna make sure that you choose the amount of storage that's appropriate for you. Um, after you go through that, it'll uh, show you the terms of service that you have to agree to, and then you have to grant your Synology user account access to the Synology C2 storage cloud service. Um, after you go through all that, then we would actually be looking at what you're seeing right now on my screen where it shows us. Now, as I mentioned before, I do have a DS1813 Plus that I'm actually using to back up some data too. So you'll see here that I've used 512 gigs worth of uh, storage and I've got 2.49 uh, available and I'm on a three terabyte storage plan. So we'll just go ahead and hit next. And here's the message about granting access to C2 storage. And so what that does is it grants your Synology disk station access to your C2 storage. Um, so now we're just configuring the backup destination settings. So we're going to call this SW underscore demo backup, or no, let's call it shared backup because we're backing up a folder and share called shared. And now I've only done this once. And what's really nice and simple about it is that even though I've only done it once, 
the configuration that I did on my DS1813, it was valid and it worked. So I've actually been backing up on a regular basis since and I haven't had to touch anything. And that's what's so awesome about this is that, that it's actually this simple. And this is exactly what Synology wanted for the users. And so if you're a home user that has no IT or technical expertise, this is definitely a product that you could use and not feel overwhelmed with. And then if you're like me, where you're an IT professional, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm dealing with enterprise grade SANS. This kind of equipment is perfect for your home because it, it just works. And you know, you can do some crazy stuff with it. iSCSI MPIO storage, there's active backup for business and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's great for home labbers, it's great for IT enthusiasts, it's great for small and uh, home-based businesses. Um, and so th this, this is completely relevant because you know, whether you're a home user or you're a small business, um, you know, with the, with hyper backup, you can back up to external based hard drives. But what's really nice is that in, for example, in my environment, my 1813 does back up to an external hard drive, but I also like the protection of backing up to a cloud-based service. That way, if there's ever a fire or something happens, I have another backup copy off site. And with me using my NAS as backup, I, I'm essentially compliant with the 321 backups where you have three different backups, two different storage mediums and one offsite. So it's pretty cool what you can do with this. So here we are at the, the wizard where it's prompting us, asking us what we want to back up. So we're going to go ahead and choose to back up the shared folder. And you'll notice here that we've got active backup for business. Now, if you haven't installed this, you won't have that folder. But let's just pretend for a second that this was a small home-based business, or let's say that it was a small business. Um, using active backup for business, you can use that to back up your desktop and workstations to your Synology NAS. And then you could actually include those backups into your backup up to Synology C2 storage, which is really handy. Because again, you're taking things off site. Uh, but for this demonstration, we're only doing the shared. Um, here's another thing too, is that if you wanted to, like, let's just jump back for a second. Let's pretend for a second you wanted to back up your entire NAS. Bam, we could select the entire volume. And then the next window, we've got application backup. So you can even back up the application settings and configuration for the applications that are running on your Synology DSM um, or on your Synology disk station. It's, it's very, very cool. So I'm just going to jump back here. We don't want to do the entire volume. We're only going to do shared. Because we're not doing any of the applications, we're just going to leave these blank and hit next. And we're going to call this task shared demo backup. We want to make sure that the task notification is enabled. And what you can do is you can actually enable uh, file change detail logs. And this is nice because it'll tell you what changes there are. You can also set up bandwidth limitations. So if you have a slower internet connection, um, or let's say that you have backups that are, are going to take so long that it's going to run during business hours, you can limit the bandwidth that they use. And so for example, with this backup, I don't know, let's do the backup every day at two o'clock in the morning, just while everyone's sleeping. And we'll make sure that we enable integrity check uh, on a regular basis. So that'll be Saturday at 1150, which is fine. Now here's a very important option, enable client side encryption. Synology C2 storage and Synology C2 cloud does support client side encryption. And this is very important because um, there's some, uh, let's say that you back up to a, a cloud service and let's just pretend for a second that the cloud service gets compromised. As long as your data is encrypted and as long as the provider does not have the encryption keys, then technically you should be protected and your data should not become compromised. Now, if anyone were to ever get their hands on their keys or if you were to log into the cloud service and provide them your password or key, if they were to store that, then it does open up the door for um, uh, to, to become compromised. But whenever storing anything on the cloud, you should always have it encrypted. And especially like, for example, in my case, I am in Canada and I am using Synology's uh, data center. I believe it's in Seattle. So for me, um, if I was using this in a business environment, I would definitely want to make sure that I enable client side encryption because what that would do is uh, it would be encrypted. Uh, and there's some things that come in with like uh, HEPA and some other privacy certifications where uh, you have to make sure that you protect the data. And then there's some things about data sovereignty, which we won't get into uh, because of course, if you're storing data in the States, uh, that kind of violates the data sovereignty. But as long as uh, you do your best efforts to encrypt it, protect it, um, and you also have to notify customers and vendors where it's being stored. But anyways, that's for a different video. I'm not gonna get into it, but we are going to enable client-side encryption. And we're just gonna set up a password. And now what's really cool is that when you do this, the backups will be encrypted with a password.
But when we hit next, it will provide us with an encryption key that's downloaded for the reservation. And so if you forget your password, um, you can use the encryption key to restore your backup. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes. Um, for backup rotation settings, we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna use their smart recycle. And if you click on this, it gives you some general information about like hourly versions, daily versions, so on and so on. And uh, you know, the maximum number of kept versions is 256. So um, right off the bat, I'm gonna choose this. If you had a larger amount of data or you had a small amount of data that you're paying for, a uh, small amount of data storage that you're paying for, then you'd wanna customize this a little bit more, but it's not too big of a concern because we've got under 10 gigs. And so we're gonna go ahead and hit done. And I think at this point it should download the PEM key. And I think it's also contact and service. So you'll see right down here in the bottom left of my screen, um, it did automatically download share demo.pem. I'm not going to open this up because it's going to show some files on my computer, but uh, using Chrome, it stores it to your downloads location. Now this encryption key is very, very important. So what I would do is um, keep it off of your computer because if your computer were ever to get compromised, this encryption key could be used to decrypt your encrypted backups. You do not want that. Um, what you could do, however, is take this encryption key, um, copy it to a USB key, stick it under your bed, give a copy to a family member that lives in a different household just so that if your, your premise, your office building or home does burn down, uh, you do have a extra copy of this key offsite. Um, and because as this will decrypt your backup. So I'm going to hit no here just because I want to show you what it, this looks like. But essentially, we are at the point right now where we have a backup job configured and uh, we're virtually ready to rock and roll here. So you'll see that it says that the service provider is Synology C2. The backup location is the United States of America, which does go to their Seattle data center. It's going to this directory on Synology C2. And this is the current size of the backup. We haven't backed up any data, so I think it's just the configuration and there's no integrity check that's been done. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see that we're backing up the shared folder. We're not doing any applications. We have no file filters and we've got the backup schedule. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and hit backup now and we'll watch this actually work. And we're back. And so you'll notice that when uh, there was a few things that I wanted to showcase during this process. So while the backup was running, I went ahead and opened up the resource monitor because I wanted to collect some, uh, some statistics on what was going on in, during this process. Now keep in mind, so this is a 1621 plus, um, during the backup process, barely any CPU was utilized. And I think the RAM, like right now we're sitting at 11%. Um, so it's it's pretty nice that uh, on the right hand side, you'll notice that at, at a couple points, if you were looking at the video, that we were uploading at 26 megabytes per second to Synology uh, service. I have a one gig up, one gig down fiber connection. So that's pretty fast, probably about 20, using 25% of my uh, internet connection speed. Um, and again, I do have a firewall in place. So there's a chance that the intrusion prevention system was actually interfering with the, uh, the amount of bandwidth that I could have used. It probably could have gone higher. So we'll just take a look at this and uh, yeah, you'll notice right here, 33.9 megabytes per second, which is not too bad at all. Didn't use too many resources. And we also received a notification on the top right when this was completed. So we can go to details. Shared demo backups was successful, 1249. And this is really cool. It took three minutes and nine seconds to back up 2.5 gigs worth of data. That's not too bad at all. And one thing that's kind of interesting here is I don't know if there's a delay on this, but if you look at the target, it's actually only storing 1.51 gigs worth of data, which leads me to believe that they might actually be using compression, which could be happening during encryption, or it could be deduplication. So what you can do is if you go to version list, we can just open this up and we've got the different version lists. And so inside of this window, uh, like let's say that you had 10 or 12 versions, let's say that you wanted to delete some, there's a couple options on the right hand side where you can hit delete. You can do uh, open up backup explorer, which allows you to uh, open up the specific backup and uh, you know, download 
and restore different uh, files and folders. Uh, you can also go into your task settings. Now, as I told you before, I've set this up, never had to play with it too much. So for the first time, my first time, let's see what happens if we actually have a disaster and lose some data. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna jump into file station. We're gonna open up the shared folder and let's just delete this folder. I don't even know how to do this on here. Okay, so bam, we've just lost all of our projects, right? It's a disaster, catastrophe. I gotta figure out how to, and just to make sure, I'm gonna go into the shirt folder, I'm gonna hit action and we're gonna empty all recycling bins just to make sure that we don't have any of that data available, okay? So bam, it's an emergency, we just lost all of our stuff, um, folder got deleted, whatever, who knows what happened to it, doesn't matter, we just gotta get the data back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into hyper backup and like I said, I've never done this before. So we're gonna hit restore data. And so we've got select restoration tasks. So we're gonna choose the shared demo backup. And we're gonna, so now this is what's interesting. So that if you know your password, we can type it in. But at the same time too, if you wanted to, you could use your encryption key, browse to it, and that would also be able to work. So you can use your path, password or the key. And that's why it's important to save that file and make sure that you have it off site. So we're gonna hit okay. Um, and so now this is cool systems configure system configuration so technically if you did back up the entire volume and you backed up all your nas applications um, in that sort of situation you would want to restore your system configurations now in our specific disaster all the configurations good and valid some bozo just went in and deleted the projects folder right so we're going to choose do not restore system configuration and we're going and so what's happened here is that it's telling us that, uh, so here's the, the backups that we can restore. We've got a, an exclamation, a warning on the shared folder, and it's just telling us that the shared folder exists on our NAS and will be overwritten by the selected previous version, which is fine because it's pretty much empty right now. So if we did that, we could do the entire shared or, you know, for the sake of this video, let's just do the projects. We're just gonna hit next. Uh, so this is just a summary. No, we got the version number, shared folders. We're gonna go ahead and hit done. And it looks like it's starting. I'm assuming this window should close and we should be able to get something in the background here. Or maybe this window stays open with the progress. Anyways, I'm gonna let this run and speed up the video footage. Okay, and we're back. That was freaking quick. I don't know if you noticed that, but on the right hand side, we were downloading it. What what speed? 162 megabytes per second. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the shared folders restore was completed. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And just for the purpose of that, I'm wondering, so here we got the logs. Let's see how long that restore took. That restore took less than one minute to restore a couple gigs worth of data. That is insane. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up the file station. We're gonna go to shared. And here are our photos and documents. And there you can see, we've completely restored the projects folder and all the contents of it. So as you can see, like we just tested our first backup restore from Synology C2 cloud service. And it worked fantastic. I gotta say, I am very, very, very impressed with this Synology. You did a fantastic job with this service. And I can't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but it is very affordable, especially when you compare it to other backup services such as uh, Azure blob storage for uh, products like Veeam um, and uh, some other services. So uh, yeah, anyways, it's great. So there's the demo. Um, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't done so. Uh, please leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Um, anyways, thanks for joining me today. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you later.